What's up, y'all? It's your boy eBay Fight Predictions in the building, uh, and this is your little uh, last minute and pretty late breakdown on Rafael dos Anjos and uh, versus Renato Mocano. Um, gonna give you guys a prediction. I didn't give a prediction yet, but uh, I kind of, I kind of got where. Kind of got to feel where I'm going. Even when I broke the news, I kind of felt like I didn't know actually who I was going to go with because it's such a it's it's a really compelling uh, matchup actually between Dos Anjos and Mocano. And obviously, we re we already know how this you know fight got booked. You know, late replacement Mocano stepping in about like what five what five to four days notice. Uh, they're going to do it at catchway. I think at one uh, one sixty five. I think or one sixty. Uh, it's going to be five rounds, and it's going to be a really good fight. I know some people are actually, like, not too happy about it. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think they match up really well, actually. I think it's a, it's actually a harder fight uh, for Dos Anjos here um, because uh, Mocano is so uh, well-rounded. I feel like he's going to give him some problems in a lot, a lot of areas. And I feel like um, – I think I felt like some people might call me a hater, but uh, I felt like Dos Anjos – had a a path of victory towards Fiziev. I felt like if he took him down and he drowned him in wrestling pressure, I felt like he had a really good chance of winning that fight. Um, and against Mokanyo, I don't know if he can really do that. I don't know if he's going to do that. But uh, it's it's a good fight. It's a really good fight. I can't wait for it. Uh, this is Mokanyo's big jump up uh, at lightweight. And we've seen when Mokanyo is on, he's one of the best in the world, man. Like, don't forget, this guy was top five as a featherweight, legitimately top five. He beat Cup Swanson in spectacular fashion. I'll talk more about that. But, um, you know, he, he this is his first real big opportunity at lightweight uh, to really showcase himself. You know, obviously coming off of that great performance against Hernandez and then, you know, the great, uh, <laughs> you know, post-fight speech that he had. A fucking big money, uh, big money Mocano. Uh, <laughs> I loved it. But um, besides that, you know... Uh, this is a big opportunity for him to fight a former uh, former champion in a co-main event spot on a big pay per view, uh, and and obviously for Dos Anjos, you know, you know he got to defend his throne basically, you know, defend his name, defend his ranking, and just stay on that path of winning and uh, on the path of you know getting another title fight and potentially another championship. So, um, you know, this is a big fight for both guys and uh, a lot to win and a lot to lose in my humble opinion. But if we go to the stats, man, and look at where these guys uh, are at right now. Currently, I think Dos Anjos, it says on the topology rankings, they have him at number 11. But I think he's at 6 or 7 at, at the actual uh, UFC lightweight rankings. Uh, he comes with a record of uh, 30 and 13. He's fighting out of uh, Brazil, age 37, a height of 5'8", uh, and reaches 70. Mocanio is unranked, but uh, in the world, he's number 19 as a lightweight, 16 and 4 and 1. Uh, he's fighting out of, well, it says he's fighting out of Brazil, but I know he's fighting out of Florida. I, I think he was at at Brazil currently, and he's getting his plan right over here. But, uh, you know, has a high at a 5'11 and a reach of 72. So he does have a bit of a reach advantage going into this matchup, which is interesting to look at. Um, I actually wanted to talk about this as the topology kind of, uh, you know, predictions and who people are going with it you know 23 percent are going with mocanio and 77 percent are going with dos Anjos. so that kind of tells me right then and there that uh this fight's actually a little closer than what people are giving it credit for and um i i think this fight can really be dangerous this is a dangerous fight for uh dos Anjos, man he he can really lose this fight wherever the fight goes i really do believe that i think people aren't giving mocanio credit for his striking i think he gets caught by really good power punchers and RDA is tough and he he knocked out Benson Henderson and he does have some KOs that don't get it twisted he can he can crack but he doesn't I wouldn't say he is that one hitter quitter like a Korean zombie uh or even that like you know um that fast twitch fiber shit like uh Jose Aldo or uh, Fiziev in that. He's more of a uh, a workhorse. He's always been that kind of workhorse fighter. That's why he was so underrated, in my humble opinion, in his come up. And when he fought Anthony Pettis, I felt like he just outworked Pettis. He wanted it more than Pettis. And that's what uh, Dos Anjos, I feel like, has an advantage over Mokanyo. But in terms of what Mokanyo can do and how he can really win this fight, uh, I, I truly believe that... Um, he can use his, uh, his, his, I don't know if he can take him down, 
But uh, if Dos Anjos takes him down, I feel like he, when it hits the mat, he might have a jiu-jitsu advantage. And he's longer. Uh, I think his actual technical offensive boxing is really good. You go watch what he did to Calvin Cater. Like, that was fucking incredible. That Cater performance is so, like, forgotten. People don't know what that man did to Cater. Uh, Jika Chikedzi couldn't even do that to Cater. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of those things I was worried about for Cater. Even though I picked Cater over Jiga, I was worried that Jiga could look at that fight against Renato and use the leg kicks and replicate that. It was a very scary fight to look at. But only Renato did that because Renato is very special. You know, he's a really special fighter. And I think he doesn't get enough credit for it. He has a, a legit skill set. And um, he's like, maybe it's just me. I have a preference. I like a lot of like well rounded fighters, guys that can do everything. And he's just one of those guys. Yeah, he has some holes in his uh, striking. Uh, you know, but th there's just simple little deficiencies. You know, sometimes uh, I feel like he kind of looks at his work too much. I feel like he'll land a few. I feel like he'll land a combo and then just be like, oh, I landed a combo and basically get, uh, you know, get hit after that or wait to get hit. You know, Teddy, As uh, Teddy Atlas says it best, you know, uh, admiring your work. And I feel like he does that a lot. Um, but when he's on, he's on. When he's not worrying about, you know, landing the combinations, he's just doing it. He's, he's, tr he looks tremendous. You know, what he did to Cub Swanson, uh, what he did to fucking Alexander Hernandez, you know, that was a, a tremendous fight. Uh, I, I thought he looked so good in there. And, uh, the way he was able to shoot takedowns on a legit high school state wrestling champion, you know, uh, that guy, that kid's a good wrestler. Uh, Hernandez ain't no, I, I know, I know some people don't like him and I know I just recently, if you follow me on Instagram, I did put him in MMA bum jail, but, uh, the kid's actually a really good fighter, you know, um, he, he's very talented, uh, you know, he has some good wins on, on, on his fucking resume and, uh, he has power, legit power and he can crack and he's well-rounded. I think he's a really well-rounded fighter. I think he gets tired and he kind of quits on himself a little bit, but, um, He's he's good everywhere, and he had that legit power, and I felt like he had. If you picked Hernandez, I didn't even think it was a bad pick, even though I picked Renato. Um, that kid could have won that fight. He really could have, you know, if he landed that perfect shot. It's just about if you do or if you don't. But um, you know, he uh, Renato looked good in there, and, and that's just that's just a fact. But for Dos Anjos, we know Dos Anjos' his fucking resume, his uh, his performance against Benson Henderson, what he did to Nate Diaz. Uh, what he did to fucking Anthony Pettis, you know, the, these are legit guys. Yeah, I know he had a bit of a, you know, hiccup against uh, Eddie Alvarez and then Tony Ferguson, uh, but man, he, he came back with a fucking vengeance when he fought Neil Magny and Robbie Lawler and just put it on those guys, and then he had a bit of a slump, right? You know, he lost to Colby Covington, no shame in that, lost to Usman, um, you know, lost to Leon, lost to Chiesa, but uh, let's not forget, man, he fucking put a whooping on Kevin Lee, and I kind of see that fight looking like this. I feel like it's going to be a barn burner. I think these guys are both going to go for takedowns. I think the striking is going to be very even, but I think it's just the will. It's going to be a battle a battles of wills, and I'll talk more about that. And obviously, uh, Dos Santos is coming off a really good victory over Paul Felder. Uh, I thought, he, you know, I watched that fight, man. His wrestling looked so good in there. Uh, the way he transitioned from each takedown to takedown. I know a lot of people weren't happy with the performance, but it's still Paul Felder, man. That, that guy has a win over the current lightweight champion. You got to respect the guy. Um, you know, and it is what it is. But I, I feel like Dos Anjos right now, uh, I know he's coming off that uh, that knee injury, but man, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was, you know, I was following him on Instagram and I was watching some uh, some stuff, and he looked like in the best shape of his life for this training camp. It looked like he had the best training camp ever uh, for Fiziev, and you know, Renato Mokanyo might get the worst of it. Um, and and that's one thing, Mokanyo. I feel like he's longer. He's so good. He can match up everywhere technically with Dos Anjos. Um, you know, obviously he hasn't proven it on a high level in the lightweight division, but he's proven it in the featherweight division, in my opinion. And he does have a win over Jeremy Stevens, uh, a guy that fucking flatline killed uh, Dos Anjos. So that, that's also another good thing for him going into this matchup. If you're picking Mocano here, uh, I think you have a legit chance uh, of being proven right. But my thing is that as much as I like Renato, I really do like Renato a lot. I think um, 
even though he's longer and he can use his reach and he can set up some traps and maybe get a finish and maybe tra uh, trap uh, Dos Anjos is in bad submission and catch him. He can catch him, but that's really what I'm going based off. Can he catch him? But for RDA, I think RDA can win this fight everywhere. I feel like if RDA wanted to take him down, hold him down, I feel like he could do it. I feel like RDA is the better wrestler out of the two. I feel like Mokanyo might have a better jiu-jitsu game, but I think it's not on bottom. I think it's on top. So I don't think Renato is going to be a real problem off his back. Uh, I think uh, RDA should be fine there if he's on top. And I think on the feet, I think RDA is going to have some problems. But if RDA can kind of bite on his mouthpiece and push Mokanyo, I feel like he'll break Mokanyo. I really do. I really do. I feel like the body kicks are there. The, uh, the body work for uh, RDA is there. And uh, he's a dog, man. He's always going to be in the fight. And, uh, you know, even if you bet RDA, he's never going to quit on your money. He might lose, but he's going to give his whole entire heart and soul to that fight. I've seen him just go out there and just go for it. And, um, you know, I, I feel like the body kick is there uh, for RDA. And I just feel like RDA is just tougher. And he, no matter what, he has a better chin, even though he's... He's more war-torn, war and he's been through the battles. He just still has a better chin than uh, Mokanyo. So I, I think he's going to hurt Mokanyo in the fourth round. Uh, and this is uh, Mokanyo's taking this on short notice. And y'all know the short notice power boost. I believe in that. But uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to help Mokanyo no matter what. Uh, I think Mokanyo's going to look good in the early rounds, but I think uh, RDA is going to put it on him bad. Um, I think he's going to hurt him. I think he's going to take him down a few times in that fight. And I think when he gets him down... Um, I think he's going to get his signature arm triangle, man. He is so good with those arm triangles, man. He just gets them all the time. And uh, I, I got to go with RDA here by fourth round submission. I know it's a big one. I know a lot of people are going RDA by decision. But I think RDA can get a finish here. I really do. I think he's that good of a fighter. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. I got to go with RDA via fourth round submission. But hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. It's your boy eBay. I got to get out of here. I got to go to the fucking bank and go handle some business. But don't forget, obviously, uh, to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Uh, go click the notification button, like, comment, and share the video. And obviously, go follow me on my Instagram and follow me on my Twitter. All those links will be down below in the description box. Love y'all and goodbye. I'm out of here.